I have a wedding to go to, and that wedding is in New Zealand. For the Scottish contingent, kilts have been requested, and having spent all my money on flights, I'm going to try and make one. Am I going to try and make one? I'm going to have to, really, aren't I? Oh dear. My guide throughout this process is The Art of Kilt Making, a weighty and cryptic tome that I've spent enough time with to completely destroy the binding. I immediately rejected the obligation of tartan and knew if I was going to do this, I would be sourcing materials at the charity shop. This meant patchwork, but how much? A civilian knife blade pleated kilt requires as much as eight yards of fabric. Whatever a yard is, it's too many. Then I found out about the earliest tailored kilts, requiring only four yards. I can do that. And I did. The process got its own film and I'm pretty excited by the final result. I could now move on to planning. The box pleated kilt I am making is made of three parts. The front apron, the pleats and the under apron. It wraps around the waist and is secured with buckles on either hip. The intended silhouette is a slight A-line, while in profile the apron falls vertically and the pleats scallop into the lower back. It is basically a girdle with a bustle to give you the flat stomach and dump truck combo we all dream of. You only need three measurements, the circumference of the waist and hips, and the distance from the waist to the top of the knee. The magic is in the split. The split decides how much fabric will be in the aprons and how much will be in the pleats. This creates the kilt silhouette. I have gleaned five rules from the book for splitting. With no kilt making experience, I can only hope that I've got this right. And blindly, I put these rules into practice with my measurements. I get a slightly too tight 91 centimeters on the waist and a little disappointing 99 at the hips. For my first split, I half these evenly. On the second split, I send half a centimetre to the aprons on the waist and half a centimetre to the pleats on the hip. And this split satisfies all the rules. The difference in the apron is totally manageable, 15 millimetres on each side, a one centimetre difference on the hips, and 10 five centimetre pleats sounds about right although I find no information on whether an odd or even amount of pleats is preferred. I'm going to stick with a hip split, but what if I send another centimetre to the apron on the waist? This will give a tighter shaping to the lower back, but the apron will be almost square. I don't know if this is a bad idea, but I won't know until I try. I can now mark out the kilt. First, I need a straight edge to work from. I concertina the fabric, so that it will fit under my straight edge and strike a line that, I hope, will stay within the confines of the fabric. Unfolding the fabric, I have regular marks that I can join before realizing the fabric skews off dramatically at one end. I fuss with this for a while and eventually settle on a line to work from. The line will be the top edge of the kilt. Working from the right corner, I'm looking for a center point for my apron. This is when I start to realise the benefits of tartan as you're basically drafting on squared paper. Whereas, I only have chaos and a straight edge. Two last details you need to know. A two inch rise is added to the total length of the kilt and the pleats on a kilt are only sewn in one third of the way down the length. This sewn part is called the fell. I divide my total length by three and measure this in from the top edge. This is my hip point, and I measure 5cm from the top edge, and this is my waist point. I now mark out the outside edge of the apron. The edge is square to the top, from the waist to the corner, so I measure half my waist apron split here. At the hip point, I measure half my hip apron split. I then mark in my bottom edge, measure the hip apron split again, and add about 25mm to give that A-line shape. I then connect the hip and the waist points with a flowing curve and I'm 100% sure I'm getting this wrong. But I replicate the process on the inside edge and I can move on to the deep pleat. This is there to give you plenty of excess fabric to preserve your modesty when sitting. You measure about 25cm from the bottom inside corner of the apron and that point 
on the top edge marks the first pleat. From here, I can mark the rest. Pretty much half of the book and the supplementary PDF on box pleated kilts is about working this out and I have to really think this through before committing but without having to match sets or stripes. I can skip most of it and just do maths. I have a pleat width of 5cm at the hip. I'll need 3 times that for nicely meeting pleats. So I just measure 15cm and mark for each of the 10 pleats. I can then check the distance from the first pleat to the centre of the apron and measure that from the last pleat mark and... I don't have enough fabric.